you guys, I'm really excited to be partnered with First Form. I've decided in 2023 to really take my fitness to the next level since it hasn't been a priority since my brain tumor that was just getting healthy. But now that I feel a lot better and feel like it's time to conquer life more and that means getting in shape. First Form supplements like the greens and reds are really helping me on my fitness journey. You can stay tuned on my YouTube as I create more fitness posts or add me as your referral when you download the First Form app. Check out the link in the description to find out more. Hey y'all, it's Victoria and we're back for season two, baby, of Validated by Victoria. I'm really excited to get the podcast back up and going. It's been a minute and I've missed it. And so now we're back for season two. We have a lot of cool people coming on the podcast. And I'm just really excited to keep growing my podcast and keep growing this community of listeners and sharing some more insight and all into my life, to my friend's life, to new people I meet. So not only do their stories get validated, but you feel validated in your life journey as well. So I'm glad you guys are back for season two, listening in, watching it on YouTube, listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I just sincerely, guys, I appreciate all the listens in season one. Just really inspiring. A lot of messages have came in, like, thank you for sharing a podcast. Um, it, it's just been a whirlwind. And I was like, okay, now's the time after all my travels uh, to really bring back season two. So really excited to be joining you guys back in on the podcast. New things in my life. If you're watching on YouTube or if you just seen my social media, I've cut my hair into bangs. So story behind the bangs. <laughs> So I had was traveling in Egypt and Morocco and, and guys, I'm just getting right into the story time. So like no lag time, we're getting in. Um, but I was traveling in Egypt and Morocco, like fun, so amazing. Highly recommend Egypt. And if you're gonna go to Egypt, utilize um, this travel service called, their business name is Egypt Eye. Incredible. They planned everything out. We didn't even have to think. And that's like one thing when you're traveling, you don't want to think so much. You just want to enjoy where you're at. And Egypt, I really set up the whole itinerary, set up the pyramids, set up everything that we went to, the mummies, super amazing. Egypt, I, if you're going to go to Egypt, if you're going to go to Cairo, check out the pyramids. Incredible group. They set up the camel ride, um, all the photos. Great time. Then we went to Morocco. Um, my friend, Allison and I and our photographer Ben, we went to Morocco with We Are Trend 45. It's this like travel social media influencer agency. Incredible villa, Villa Marrakesh. Um, or, oh my gosh, I forgot the name, but I'll put it down in the description or you can check it out on my Instagram. But We Are Trend 45, this influencer travel agency had reached out and we decided to go to Egypt first, then Morocco. And then we were crazy enough to go to New York Fashion Week right after that, after being jet lagged. So um, incredible time. And I was just thinking the whole time while I'm abroad, I just got like inspo, I guess maybe from Cleopatra, who knows? But I'm like, okay, girl, now's the time to level up your game. You're about to turn the big 3-0. Yes, I reveal my age um, in April. And it, it, it's time to level up. Like, what can we do to change my modeling game to make me look different? Um, just, just do all that jazz. And I was like, all right, I want to cut bangs. So I had cut bangs probably when I was like 16, 15, 16. And I lived in a small town. I'm like, oh my God, I want to try the bangs. Like my mom always had bangs and she looked banging in the bangs. And I had bangs when I was like a little girl and it looked so cute. So I'm like, oh, I want to try the bangs. But like, I was really not really good at styling my hair. I was such like a shy tomboy, play basketball, didn't know how to do my hair. My mom still like did my hair till I was like 18 because I was just, I just wasn't in tune with everything. I was just so shy. So I, I got my bangs cut like at 16 and maybe I'll include a picture. I don't know if I want to find it because it looked not cute, but I got my bangs cut and they looked a little greasy. Like I will say, I mean, sometimes like the bangs will get a little greasy and I got made fun of hard. And I remember there was this one mean girl who was like, ah, that girl with the greasy bangs, like who does she think she is? Cause I like, threw a little Cinco de Mayo party at our farm um, in North Carolina. And I remember that and it haunted me. And I was just like, I'm never getting bangs again. But let these grow out. This girl from some random high school that probably has five kids by now called me greasy bangs. I'm like, 
girl, I should have been like, girl, bye, get your greasy self away. Like, I don't know. I just didn't have a backbone back then. So I'm just like, oh, I'm crying. I'm just gonna let my bangs grow out. Whatever, never thought about bangs again because that greasy bang from the white trash girl in North Carolina <laughs> called me. Yeah, I'm gonna call her white trash, I don't care. Um, really affected me. So I was just like, I'm never gonna get bangs again. So after the whole experience in Egypt, Morocco, I'm like, F it, F my 16 year old trauma of some weird girl messaging me. I have greasy bangs and starting this whole rumor around school that I was greasy. Didn't know how to do my hair, which was true, but who cares? Stop spreading that ish. Like, who gives a crap? I was like, I'm gonna cut bangs again. So, and it was right before New York Fashion Week. Like, the people who booked me already knew what I looked like. <laughs> They're like, F it, I'm gonna go do bangs. And so I went to Blandy on 5th um, in New York after I came back. And like, right before all the shows, I was like, I wanna get bangs, but I was nervous. So she cut them long. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna look good. And then like, I had them in my face the whole time. And there's like some photos that are just like really long because I was nervous. I wanted to make sure if I didn't like it, I can push it back. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm gonna go full send. Full send or no send. So I was like, hey Violet, let, let's just do it. I need to do the thing. Like I want them in my face. I want to be banging. This is, this is the time. The time is now. So she's like, girl, come back. She cut my bangs and now I feel like just a whole new person, a whole new woman. <laughs> it's just, it's a whole thing for me. So I'm really excited about this bangs. Um, the bangs are staying. Some people don't like them, but I do. And if you were going to call me, call them greasy, go right ahead. Because honey, I don't care. I'm not 16 anymore. I'm about to be 30. And I love my bangs. So there's that. I feel more like Sandra Bullock too. Like uh, I get more comments that I look like Sandra Bullock more than ever with the bangs, but it's kind of giving me like 70s mod, I don't know, very posh. Uh, and you know what's funny? Also, I got the inspo because I was like scrolling on TikTok mindless, mindlessly and I saw some girl, she was like, this is what I used to look like. And she like stunning, stunning, um, just bombshell. And she's like, then I did my hair to a wolf cut with like bangs and a crazy color. And she's like, I got booked more after the crazy hair. And I like looked wild. And I'm like, you know what? I want to do more modeling jobs. So I'm going to cut my hair into bangs too. That was like part of the inspo. Because I want to get booked more. And I want to look different. Especially like during New York Fashion Week. Miami Swim Week coming up. Other jobs. And <laughs> what's funny is it's worked. Because um, it just gives me more of a uniqueness now in the industry instead of just being like a brunette down here in South Florida, which is like one in a billion. So bangs gives me a little other percentage going on. Um, so really excited to be debuting the bangs here on Validated by Victoria. Um, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and all your support. Um, other news other than all the banging news. Um, Egypt, Morocco, so much fun. Uh, wow, I went to Texas. I went to Ox Ranch um, for the Gundy Awards. Oh, my earring just fell out. <laughs> Pick that up. Um, I went to Texas for the Gundy Awards, and it was amazing. And it gave me this like newfound, I guess, inspiration just to do more um, with my platform and like do something different because I had been in a rut. I'm like, okay, you know, a lot of people are doing podcasts. A lot of people, a million bajillion girls are doing like fashion, they're doing the get ready with me, it's like that little Alex Earl stuff. I'm like, okay, like a million people are doing it. All my ideas are getting taken. I don't know what to do. What is going to set me apart? What's going to keep me unique? So I went to the Gundy Wards, like saw, like got a lot of inspo and I like love shooting guns. Like whatever you want to think about that. Like I really love shooting it, learned about gun safety, learned, you know, the whole back premise like what you should the foundations as I should say the foundations of what you should do before you start shooting so learn all about that and protecting yourself especially as a female in today's society so um I, I just learned all about that and I'm like you know what I miss being the little farm girl with the greasy banks whatever you want to say who was shooting guns with my brother who was in the camo and the mud didn't care didn't care and I'm like let's bring that girl back so I've started this new YouTube series doing kind of like Florida man things down here in Florida, doing outdoor activities, bringing back my inner child that I miss. And like coming to this new decade in my life, I'm like, you know what? I, it's time to bring back your inner child, find that peace, find that power in yourself. But 
Everyone needs to find the inner child and bring that spark back again. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. It's not being childish. It's just finding your inner child, finding your inner joy. When we were kids, little things would bring us joy. And back before all the technology and all that stuff, the littlest things would bring me joy. Just being outside, being with my family, would bring me joy. So I'm bringing back the inner child and starting this new YouTube series called Victoria in the Wild. So first episode, I'm shooting guns. Next episode, I'll probably be shooting some more guns. Um, plans to go gator hunting, bow fishing, deep sea fishing, bringing back my inner child, being in the outdoors, being alive, being kind of just detached and just doing crazy, crazy fun things. So I'm really, really pumped about that. So that's something that's new that's going on. Um, other things uh, regarding mental health, definitely want to talk about this for a second before we get into the interview. Um, but mental health wise, Lately, I have been just in a grief rut. It's such a grief rut. I went and watched Creed um, the other day, and like it hit me really, really hard because um, Michael B. Jordan, Creed, um, in the movie, his mom had a stroke, had multiple organ failure, and he he had gotten in a fight before with his mom. And he's like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Literally, it was almost very similar to what happened with me and what happened with my mom. And it broke me. I like cried in the bath. I was like punching the wall in the bathroom, the movie theater, freaking out. And just, it's just, I've spiraled since then with the grief. And it's just, I think it's because I'm coming up on this new decade in my life and I miss my mom. And if you're going through grief and you're feeling okay, like you're going to feel not okay in a while. It, it comes in waves. There's no linear timeline for grief. There's no circular, oh, here's the grief, whatever. People try to tell you that, and I went to grief classes. I mean, the only grief, you just gotta deal with it, and it's gonna hurt. I cried, I cried my eyeballs out till my eyelids were so swollen, couldn't open them the next day. It's okay. That just shows how much you loved that person who passed. And it just shows you, you're still healing, and it's okay, we're human, we're human. And people that try to tell you otherwise, and like, it's time for you to get over it, like, come on, buck up, like, good for them. But we all have our own timeline. We all have our own way to getting over things. And you got to be true to yourself. And you know you. And it's okay if you have to get up and run to the bathroom from a move, from watching Creed and go cry your eyeballs out. That's okay. And if people are going to judge you, that's on them. They should, it, whoever you surround yourself with should be supportive, should be loving, and should understand your situation. Yes, they should help push you to not lay in bed all day and be depressed. Because I'm a firm believer, you got to get up, you got to keep going. Because the more you lay down, the more you cry, it, it's, it's going to get worse. And for me, someone who had so much love, and that was my soulmate, my mom, it, it hurts. It hurts to keep going, but that's what she wanted. And that's what your loved one would have wanted. That's what the person in your life would have wanted. For you to keep moving, to keep going, and to honor them with your love and your light. So all of that to say, grief has hit me hard lately. I know it's been... We're about to hit the year and a half mark without my mom and it's hard. And the year and a half mark is literally the day before my birthday, April 12th. My mom died October 12th, 2021, April 12th, 2023. We'll mark a year and a half and uh, it's just, it hurts. And it's like, this is the day before my birthday. Um, but for my birthday, I'm going to St. Lucia, I'll be with friends. I'm trying to start this new brand of mine. This is like a sneak peek of me saying like, I'm trying to start this new brand of mine. I'm going to shoot content in St. Lucia there. It's just going to be fun. It's just going to be fun and lighthearted and something I need. Just kind of get detached, get away from everything and, and breathe and have fun and be happy because life is so, so short. But um, all of that to say welcome back to season two, baby. A lot going on in my life. Um, a lot's changing. A lot's moving. A lot's shaking. I feel very blessed. I've started my own social media agency. I've left the corporate world done, 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 done. Social media full time, starting my own agency. So if you're interested in individual growth or content or help, or if you're a business and you want influencer marketing, website design, um, we're offering photography for local Florida clients. You want like a full service firm to do all your social media, or if you just want, you know, some individual consulting and help, Contact me at Victoria Vesh Agency, victoriavishagency.com. So doing the whole jazz, I decided to start my own business because my mentor told me my personality is, girl, you got to work for yourself. That is your personality. And I've known that for years. And I've tried to hide my light. And I finally feel like, you know, now was the time for me to blossom and for me to go and 
um, create this agency. So I'm really excited. It's been growing. Um, it's hard <laughs> it's tough to run your own business, but I've had some great support, um, some great feedback, um, and we're growing. So if you are interested in being a part, we offer free consultations for businesses. So yeah, victoriaveshagency.com, find out more about that. Also guys, first form, my body is starting to look like it did when I was an MBA dancer. And I'm going into the third decade of my life. And I'm like, girl, my body is looking good. So um, it's starting to look better. And I'm gonna say shout out to First Form. I am a First Form athlete influencer now. So if check out all my First Form products that I use. And when I promote something, I don't promote it just for the sake of promoting and getting paid. But I promote it because I believe in it. And I've turned down brand deals because I'm like, yeah, it seems great, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to promote that product. That's not me, or like I'm not, I don't use it. Um, there's been things I've turned down, believe it or not, because I, I don't want to turn my whole place into an ad page. One, but two, like it's not something I use, so I don't want to promote it. And then someone's like, hey, this doesn't work. But first one truly works. The greens and reds. My girl, my bloat is down. Girl, boy, whoever's listening, my bloat is completely like been changed because I have been like the most bloated person ever on the planet. So greens and reds in the morning, I've been taking master brain and especially with my brain tumor and like the brain fog I get, the master brain out of this world, out of this world, the vanilla protein. I'm going to start making some videos <laughs> with all my protein recipes that I used to do when I was an NBA dancer and I was the fittest I've ever been. But I want to, um, you know, start implementing those protein smoothies that I used to make with my mom back then. Um, and I'm going to start doing some recipes and using the first form protein because I honestly, that protein doesn't make my stomach upset and like everything does. So, uh, yeah, but you can check that out at victoriavesh.com forward slash shop. And this products, again, things I wear that I actually use. Um, so you're getting like the Victoria certified seal. <laughs> so um anyways i just wanted to share a couple things that are going on share a couple things i'm promoting i'm also doing a lot with bovada casino probably hear um or see me promoting them a lot and um <laughs> i started gambling like not long ago and i know it's not everyone's cup of tea you got to be careful what you do but i i love bovada their brand and their community so great and the people who run all the things behind the scenes at bovada completely amazing people. I could literally talk to them for hours. Like me and Matt from Bovada, um, who does a lot of their PR, we literally talked about how the pyramids were built by aliens for like hours. <laughs> and I was like showing him pictures. So like just the community behind Bovada is amazing. And I think that's really important when you're with a brand, you wanna make sure the people behind the brand are also awesome too, because I've worked with brands and the people behind the brand are just snakes. So I, I love Bovada firm believer of Bovada, excited to do some more stuff with them, excited to talk to some of their influencers on the platform, getting some more sports betting, talk about games, um, techniques, all of that jazz. Um, so really, really pumped to continue my work with them. But without further ado, this interview um, y'all are going to see or y'all are going to hear is with Trey Forte from Love Island. Now this is an interview I did last um, season and I didn't post it. Um, just because I kind of got crazy, kind of caught up in the whirlwind of everything going on in my life. And I had hit 25 episodes, one of the ended at season one on a high note. Um, so season two, I wanted to bring Trey's episode back because he talks a lot about the work he's doing, talks a lot about Love Island. Um, he's in Florida down here. Um, such an awesome guy. So you probably hear me say Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or something. Just disregard that. I um, also had to get my Uber Eats mid-episode because the lady didn't kind of get my gate code right. Um... So yeah, all that jazz with Trey Forte. He's such an awesome person. I think he is actually starting his own podcast. Um, so, you know, stay on the look for him. But I wanted to do my first episode with his interview. And um, I'll be interviewing some really cool people. So every episode will not only have me just blah, 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 talking, but it will have also someone really cool in the spotlight who... I need, I want to hear their story and you guys should too. And it should make you feel validated, makes them feel validated. Um, all the way around, we feel validated. It's holistic validation over here at Validated by Victoria. But guys, thank you so much for listening to this first part. Please stick around, watch, listen to Trey's interview. And without further ado, here's Trey Forte. 
Hey, Trey, what is up? I'm so happy you're here. Hey, it was good. I'm happy to be here. So you're you're in Fort Lauderdale, right? Yes, I'm in for a lot of them. Yeah. So what do like, okay, so, you know, I know you're the whole show thing and I, I definitely want to talk about that, but you, um, you like hustle, like what, you're, what kind of business are you doing? You do like advertising or marketing? Yeah. So I'm in search engine marketing. I do a lot of paid advertising. I deal with a lot of numbers, data analysis. I set up campaigns uh, for like Google ads. So for example, um, say you have an apple, an apple store and you're trying to market apples. I'm the kind of person that makes sure that your ads gets in front of people who like apples and not in front of people who like pears and oranges and stuff like that. That's cool. I, I've just been, um, cause I also, and even with all the influencing and modeling, like I have a full-time job and I do like a lot of marketing, but I do investments, but with the marketing, I've been doing the Google ads and that stuff's hard. It's not it just is. like it's fair. I'm just setting <laughs> up an app. I'm like, ah, this is a learning <laughs> curve for me, but I, I remember, I think I saw something on your Instagram story. So I was like, oh my gosh, I want to talk to him about that because SEO and all that stuff is, I uh, Especially with business, yeah. but it's like super important to have all that, especially if you're advertising a product to sell. Very, very complex. Yeah. Um, but I consider myself an expert in these things. So you work with a company, you just work for yourself. Uh so right now I have a partnership um with someone. Um oh. and he's been in the game a lot longer than me, but uh we just found each other recently and we're just piggybacking off of each other and learning different ways to do different types of things. But I would say I've been, I went to school for this, but I would say I became an expert of it about a year ago. Well, and you do it like all the time. You just got out of literally a meeting, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Today was a super busy day. I'm still catching up because uh, my birthday was yesterday. So oh I had a God. short day. Happy yeah. birthday. Oh, thank you. How old are you now? I am 19. You're, did you say 19? <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, no, oh, I'm, I'm 28. <laughs> I'm 28. Aw. Well, happy belated birthday. I'm sorry. I haven't, I, I feel you. I don't thank even you. know what day it is, especially with the holidays. You don't know what day it is. You're a December baby. <laughs> um, yeah, time is definitely flying. It's, it's flying. A lot faster. Yeah, a lot faster than I would like. <laughs> yeah, I know. The new year is like almost here. I feel like I think when this episode drops, it's going to be during the new year. So we're, I'm talking a little backtrack when this episode is already out. But um, yeah, I just can't believe how fast this year flew by. Uh, but you went to Ohio State? Yes, the Ohio State. The Ohio State. Okay. You went to the Ohio State. You played football. Like, tell me that whole experience. Cause I had like, I had a couple athletes on and we talked about like being an athlete and, and especially in college and all the parties <laughs> and the craziness. Yeah. So, my, um, my experience was a little unique. So, uh, um, in high school, I was like, like really, really skinny and scrawny, but I was always a good athlete. So, I had, like, um, chances to play football at smaller schools, like, for scholarship. But um, I actually went to Ohio State as a preferred wall. So I ended up going up through the ropes and then, like, going from being 155 pounds to, like, being almost 200 pounds when I graduated. And wow. it was just, yeah, like, all natural, just through hard work and discipline and not living to people tell me what I couldn't do. I mean, that's cool. I don't hear a lot of walk-on stories anymore. It's all like just like recruitment stuff. But yeah, like I saw you do like personal yeah. training too. Are you still yeah, doing that? I had to cut back on that. I had to cut back on that because I just got so busy with the other stuff. And like all this stuff that I do with Google Ads is helping me put in and actually get ready to prepare to launch ads for my business. So I'm excited about that. Um, but I, I just haven't really had the time to train other people. I just yeah. been focusing on myself, my business and just getting better. 
What's like, okay, what's your tip? Like, what's a, a tip or trick? Like, one tip or trick with Google Ads? Because I feel like people should know. So I do audits on a daily basis where I just, people will come to me from like CEOs of businesses and say, hey, I was working with this agency and I wasn't getting a return on my investment. And then I'll look at their account uh, with read-only access and see that the account was not set up correctly. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, people, they don't necessarily know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. I would say... I would say about 75% or more people who set up accounts don't know what they're doing because it is complex. So it's, it's very easy to fuck up. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Really. I, you <laughs> know, that's that. why they have <laughs> SEO experts like yourself or, you know, people who know all the ads and everything. Like I have a couple friends who do that and it's convoluted. Like I'm, that's not my thing. Yeah. But so I think it's it's just yeah, so a tip would just be to make sure that you have the right campaign type set up for the right marketing goal. That's the number one tip. Right campaign, right marketing goal. Still confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your company that you work for? Like, what is the your company name? Uh, TNT Growth. TNT. What, Growth? Yes. What does your shirt say? Oh, this is just a regular ass polo. <laughs> okay. I was like, I thought that was your company <laughs> no. name, and I was like trying to read it. That's why no, I'm not. I'm like, I so can't I read home. my eyes. I work, from, I work from home, and I only put this polo on just for this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, I did not dress up. I, I like, I kind of had a hell of a weekend. Um, I went to like Brad Paisley concert and all this stuff, and like, Oh, uh, and then just I feel stressed with the holidays. So I'm like in my I've been in these clothes like literally all day and then pop You'd off. Be on the I'm, You'd be on the Yeah. I'm so like <laughs> it's almost too much. There's like I'm I had to cut myself back, but like even cutting myself back was just driving two hours <laughs> to Naples, but I'm just always somewhere. <laughs> And then, yeah, like, the I'll next see. couple weeks, like, I'm going to be in uh, New York City for Christmas and back in North Carolina for a home, see my family. And then I'm going to Nashville for New Year's. And then I'm going to South America. But I, I work remote, too. So I think that's the beauty. A lot of people don't like yeah, working at home nice. or working remote. But I like it because I'm able to do the things, like, I, I want to do with my life. Because, like, my number one thing the whole, like, my whole life was I want to travel because my parents traveled, like, to 80 countries so that's what i want to like do so i've been on tiktok antarctica <laughs> i got deep in the tiktok archives and somehow got on antarctica tiktok so now i want to kick so i'm hoping maybe because my friend allison and i um want to go to south america so that's what we're trying to plan on doing and then uh, i'm hoping i can scoot down to antarctica but yeah i mean always on the go but trying to live you know live life to the fullest <laughs> i feel you i got a couple of trips planned up um coming up soon so on thursday i'm going to scottsdale you ever been there Ooh, i love scottsdale i love scottsdale too i would move there but it's just a little bit too far away from my family yeah it's all your family on the east coast yeah all my family's in ohio ohio so it's, it's too far but i love it over there this will be like my 10th time going over there I I love Arizona. I love that it's not humid, like here in Florida. And then like in South Carolina, it was super humid. Um, So let me backtrack. Yes. We, I invited you to the magazine party. That was stressful. <laughs> that was so much fun. We partied, we, uh, we partied like way too much. Um, But you know, you're used to that because it's typical. Well, I don't, I want to say you're used to it, but you understand that life because it's like Florida down here. There's always something going on. Like even art. Did you do anything always. for our causal? Uh yeah, I went to two things and uh, I I got tired. I got tired. I got tapped out. <laughs> me and my friend Allison, we got we got dead tired. We we're just like, what are we doing? I was out till four thirty a.m. But like that, um, Charleston weekend was just like uh, another yeah. Miami, like one Miami day for me. But it's funny. But did you know Becca Moore? Because she's from Ohio. Or have you ever run into her? I, I didn't know her actually <laughs> until we just met. In, in South like Carolina, Ohio, Ohio. I know it's crazy because we're like 
we're actually in the same areas too we really just never met and it's <laughs> so fast. funny how many people social media getting kind of like the influencer social media world that you've probably passed by and just didn't realize I know I'd be so locked I'd be so locked in I, I don't even be do you do anymore. any influencing or like what or have you like kind of gone into that because I know you're busy with your work I mean I do but I don't it's not my full-time thing so yeah. I'll, I'll do it when when the time allows it yeah I, I feel like a lot of people don't realize that about like people who you know verified on social media or whatever influencers that a lot of influencers have other full-time jobs because I just think that's smart unless you have your own business or something going on for you but after COVID I realized like you gotta have multiple streams of income <laughs> because <laughs> you just never know what the what will happen with the world and that was like big for me because I was I was just doing modeling and influencing like you know, small small scale um, even though I was still in school and then I was doing like the event based stuff at monster. And then when COVID hit all that, like pretty much went away. Cause everyone's like, Oh, I don't have a budget yes. or like, there's no events. There's nothing social to do. And I'm like, this is when I got to find a, you know, a, a corporate something, something to sustain me through. If that ever happens again, you always need to have a safety net, but I know so many influencers who juggle so much, but it's, it's a lot. And it's, down here yes. in Florida, there's so much going on. Like our Basel, there's always something on the weekend, which I love it, but I also get I get tired. So I'm hoping in January it slows down a bit, but it's not because this is in season right now. <laughs> Facts. I mean, a lot of people don't know. Like during COVID, I COVID was like tough for me because I was running my own gym, and ah. yeah, yeah, and like I'm making good money doing everything I wanted to do. And, you know, it's crazy because people always ask, like, what's your five year plan? My five year plan then is a lot different than what it is right now, just mm -hmm. because of a lot of things that happened in between. But as you know, once COVID hit, like in the peak of March, gyms were the first thing to close. Yeah. And it's so you're just like, damn, like, what do you do? Like, damn, what the fuck do I do now? How long is this going to last? Like, you're just in a bind. And then. Luckily, I just ended up, uh, I got reached out. They reached out to me to go on the Love Island. And then I did that during COVID. And after that, a whole lot of opportunities came and I just took it and ran with it. Well, okay, this is a good segue. So let's talk about Love Island because I want to say something uh, about that. Uh, and I'll tell a funny story about me and Love Island. Um but like, did they reach out to you on Instagram or something? Is that because that's what happened to me with a reality show? Yeah. <laughs> and so I got reached out to. Yeah, I got reached out by two shows actually. Um. So the Bachelorette hit me up first, mm -hmm. and then Love Island. But did you have to pick I mean, and choose, or did you go for both and then so see what stuck? Yeah. So I did. Um. I did interview for uh, with the Bachelorette people, and I interviewed with Love Island, and the vibes were just completely different. Yeah. <laughs> like, the vibes were completely different from the people I was talking to, and I just, I feel like Love Island was just um, a better option, or like a more fun option. Yeah. So, funny story about <clears throat> me and Love Island. So, when it first, like, the first season they were doing the U.S. because I always watched the U.K. one. They reached out to me to audition. I went through the whole thing. I actually got flown out to L.A. I was like in the final. St <laughs> and um, the producers are just like, I, I guess I'm, I'm just not. And I, I talked about this with Mike, on C who, who's on Siesta Key. Like you just kind of have to be like open and do everything. And I am pretty open, but like I'm. they wanted me to be like a crazy party girl. <laughs> They had already like found my stereotype, I guess they wanted to put me in. I'm like, that's not me. And the producer <laughs> at the time, I remember I was sitting in there and like telling about my life and everything. And he's like, why do you speak in complete sentences? And I I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. So that was my, okay. I mean, I, I say this now because I'm not going to go on Love Island, but uh, <laughs> I like did all that. And I think I was supposed to go in as a bombshell, but then I got a job with Monster and I was like, bump that. <laughs> it, it was kind of long ago. It was right 
I mean, because what seat you were on second season, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was, you know, obviously the first season before you, like before, I guess, pre COVID. And, um, but like they went to a sick location. I don't know, like at Bali or something at the time. So that was kind of cool. Yes. And I thought it because we were supposed to go to like Fiji or something. Yeah. And, and then COVID hit. So we had to get stuck in, in Vegas. But I mean, luckily, <laughs> I know. But, but uh, luckily, like, I had, um, I had two dope ass producers that I had my interview with with Love Island, and ultimately that's why I went on it. And they were like um, from the UK, and I ain't gonna lie, this one dude, the dude, <laughs> he, uh, I don't, I gotta say, he was probably in like his late thirties, but that boy, that man had some swag. Like I need really? his designer, whoever he was. We have- I had a separate group or something because they were all a <laughs> older and everything. But it was, I mean, I just was like so choked up during that interview. But like, I mean, I got picked to come on as a bombshell, but I just, I, I got a job at Monster and I was like, yeah, I'd rather do, I'd rather do this. Um, cause I don't want to, it was kind of like towards the end. So I'm like, eh. but I just thought that was my like Love Island story. But so they reached out, you, you, I guess you got flown to LA, you had to do the whole deal. It was a little bit different because it was COVID. COVID? So a lot of the stuff was like done virtual. A lot of stuff was done virtually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> but I mean, like, I guess yeah. that catapulted, you know, you to where you are. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't do another dating show, but <laughs> I'm happy that I did Love Island. Yeah. If that means. I mean, Love Island's such like a, a great show and um especially the uk one is so funny those people are like i had never, never watched it before i got on my like friend was like a super fan so she always makes me watch these like dating shows like indian matchmaking and stuff so like that was the one <laughs> she introduced me to and then it was just funny like full circle and um yeah i loved it like indian matchmaking is a great show too like hype that one up like that one's one of my favorites <laughs> if i watch like any cheesy reality shows that one's dope and i'm like not of Indian descent, but it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, she always makes me watch like the cheesy dating shows. But that one was actually like legit and it's funny and like it's more lighthearted, where I think like The Bachelor is more like really heavy, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like you're forced so to like get like- married and that's like super heavy. And Love Island just like hope to get together and date. So like that, that's why mm-hmm. I like the Love Island because I'm like, I don't know if I want to marry this person in like nine weeks. So like is it any show? like that you would just love to go on i always uh i don't know i think i'm like want to go on survivor or something something like you would do it action based yeah they had approached me and i thought about I, you know that was years ago but i was like i'm scared to eat bugs and they're like you might have to do that so, that is the only thing i don't <laughs> care about swimming with sharks i don't care about snakes on me i don't care about any of that they made me eat a freaking bug like, and, and of course me telling my fear that would probably happen i would be like Bleh. like that's the only thing because i've seen it happen but i want to yeah. like i want to do like one a venture show like something like that I, I can't do a dating show i just know my dad would watch and i'd be embarrassed so <laughs> um a venture show would be fun or naked and afraid i don't know something like that <laughs> wait you would do that yeah yeah i would do it you would yeah oh, that's oh. the only reality show i do I, can, I can't do any of those other reality shows it's just too much drama and then they make up stuff and like most of the time i hear from people like they make up like not not love island but like other shows like they make up the scenarios and I, I'm I'm starting to get older, and I'm like, I don't want that drama in my life. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I'm I'm not trying to be on like a gossip column thing, <laughs> pettiness, like a housewife thing. Like, ah, that's just too much for me. Would you ever do a show again, or no? I would do a show, just not a dating show. I yeah, would well, like a, like a like a competition show or something like that. Like what? I feel like I would thrive in a competition show. Like Survivor? No, not Survivor, just because it would be like detrimental to my body. I feel yeah. like I would lose 20 pounds if I went on Survivor. Yeah. Hey. And they told me that. They told me really? that would be an option. Yeah, I don't think I, about I, that with guys and muscle mass, but um, what, yeah, what show would, would you do? Back. American Ninja Warriors? <laughs> I feel like I would do that. I would do really? American Ninja Warriors. 
I would do that. I would do like a celebrity box thing. I would do, uh, I would do challenge. Uh, let me see. Hmm. I don't know. I don't really watch TV like that, but any com any any competitor show, I feel like I would, I feel like I would uh, give anybody on that a run for their money. I think those are the most fun. They get slept on, but I think those are fun. Like a competitive yeah. show. Get some skill in there. Not just love. Exactly. But I could see you exactly. on it. Hey, I could see you on it. So, okay, what happened? Okay, I honestly, I don't watch um, reality TV. And I, I actually don't watch TV anymore. I used to. And, like, when during COVID, I was, like, the most time I watched TV because I was like, what do I do? But, <laughs> you know, I'm just busy as a bee. So it's hard for me to just, like, sit down and watch TV because my mind – like, I have a life coach, and she's like, girl, your mind runs, like, 40 million miles a second. I'm like, yeah. She's like, do you sleep well? I'm like, <laughs> so I just can't sit and watch TV because I just my mind overtakes me. Um, but what happened on like Love Island? I mean, you're still single, so right. So um, <laughs> I'm just saying. On Love that. Island, yeah, on Love Island, it was I was an original cast member, and we um, we I got through like halfway, and. I mean, it wasn't like America voted me out. It was the uh, the other Islanders voted me and my, my the girl I was coupled up with out. No. I think it, it was it's it's kind of some some stuff that goes into it um, that I'm not really allowed to talk about. Yeah. But it, I I went home prematurely. Mm. That's all I'll say. I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. I still get DMs to this day of like people. Saying, oh, you should never, oh, you shouldn't have went home like that. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. It happens. Uh, hold on, real quick. I'm sorry. My Uber Eats is coming. Oh, what you order? Um, I ordered some Asian <laughs> from Bole. Oh, that sounds good. I got, yeah, sorry. I, I was just like, oh my God. Of course, during the call. But well, you know what? Ooh, I, I, I didn't want to go grocery shopping like so I'm so I'm in my <laughs> new town home in West Palm and um just because I'm traveling so much like why do I go grocery shopping so everything's gonna get away so I've just been uber eating every day but I always have to buzz people in at the gate um but, <laughs> so wait do you and the girls still talk I, I, I feel bad I don't I didn't watch the show no, nah, no. Nah. I mean, um, I mean, I'm still cool with some people from the show, but honestly, yeah, you saw Moira. Moira was on your season. Yeah, Moira was cool. Me and Moira are still friends. Oh, okay, yeah, because she's in um Florida. Mm-hmm. Did do you think um mm-hmm. like the show prompted you to move? Oh my gosh, someone's at my door. Hold on, hold on, real quick. We're gonna meet uh, me yeah. while I, I tell them. All right. <laughs> Hey, you can just leave it at the door. You can just leave it at the door. Oh my gosh, hold on. You can just leave it at the door. (laughs) Hold on, let me tell him. I guess he's not hearing me. Dead. Of course, during the... During everything, um, hold on, leave it at the door. I just got a ring doorbell. Don't know how to use it really well. I'm still working on it. All right, we're good to go. Um, so I mean, but I guess Moira voted you all too. She's part of the crew. No, uh, oh, okay. Moira. No, I I feel like Moira. It was a it was between me and um one of my actual friends that was there. Like uh one of the guys that was friends with on the show, they had to choose on a guy to save. But it should have never even gotten to the point where both of us were up at the same time. So, uh, it just, yeah. Okay, it I gotta run. I gotta run down to the door to get my thing. So just hold up two seconds. So I had to get Uber Eats for this portion. Um, yeah, I was hangry midway during this interview, but now we're back. I'm done. 
you good you got your yeah food? it's so weird uber eats makes me um <laughs> put a pin in i was like i guess people be stealing food now <laughs> I'm like that's why he was standing. He's like, I need the pen. Woo! All right. So it was like you and your friend. Like, so do you talk to anyone else from the Love Island cast or no? Do y'all still like? Uh, majority of people. I mean, I talked to a couple of people from my season, but majority of the people I talked to weren't from my season. Like, really? I'm, I'm cool with people. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm cool just like because of people reaching out. Like after the shows are all over, I feel like they should do like a reunion show. I think that'd be so cool. They should. But um, other than that, I I pretty much just stay like to myself. Yeah. You know, I I don't I don't bother nobody. I just stay focused on like my business, my fitness, and like my personal life. I try to keep my personal life like private. Um, just to avoid like drama and stuff like that, and it just allows mm-hmm. me to be healthy. I, I I share a lot on social media, but there is a lot that I keep private because I just think that is very healthy to do. Um, but you seem like very grounded and reserved. You're not. <laughs> I mean, I, some other reality stars that I've met, not who personally been on the podcast, but some who've been on the podcast are just wild and person. <laughs> but like, you are very like grounded so i think that you know that's an awesome character because not a lot of people who go on those shows are like you're a good person outside the show (laughs) because in all my travels i've met quite a few people where i'm like "Mm, okay but i I think it's it's nice to know a lot of people in the reality shows aren't like that they're not like entitled or that like there are a lot of hard working good people who go on those shows Still and like a humble confident like humble i'm confident, confident as fuck yeah, yeah like humble i'm confident, confident. we love that but I'm also humble because i know that i'm not better than you know anybody yeah well I'm I, mean, person, have... I don't myself so well especially in this miami or florida life so you get a lot of you get a lot of one-uppers so you kind of have to that's it's fast. nice to have a good balance, <laughs> especially at our Basel. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> this influencer scene is um, is not as bad as LA, but it you know still gets a little. Oh, You're just yeah. like, so hmm. <laughs> well, I've heard. Well, so it, I I was saying earlier, and I for meant to mention, did Love Island prompt you to move to Florida, or you just kind of moved here for work, or? No, I was in Florida before Love Island. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was actually in Boca Raton. Ooh, I know. I think I, I saw that when I because I when I was in Boca, I literally just turned in my apartment keys today for my place in Boca. I was like, well, bye, Boca. Um, but I was I was like, oh, my God, you're just like literally right yeah. next door the whole time. Could have popped a flight over with me <laughs> to Charleston. I I like- but um, I mean, I love Boca. There's not a, a lot going on. I mean, there's not a lot going on up here, but I have the bright line. So, like, if I need to go to Miami or Fort Lauderdale, it's super easy. Yeah. But I love I'm Florida. Out. There's just, again, so much going on. Just a little humid. Yeah. I moved from Florida. I moved, I moved from Ohio uh, about, like, four years ago. And I just haven't turned back. Yeah. I'm I mean, not. I still go back and visit my family and stuff, but it's pretty imaginable why somebody from Ohio would want to move out. <laughs> yeah. I that's like me in North Carolina. Like it's nice to go home and see my family, but I, I, I love it here and I don't I don't plan on uh moving away from Florida anytime soon unless there's another another opportunity hits me. I think like I feel like if I move somewhere else it would be uh abroad, but for right now I'm I'm definitely chilling here in Florida. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love Spain or something. We'll see. I I lived in Spain at one point and it was fun and everyone loved my country accent. So it was great. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, so wow. what's yes. next for you, Trey? What's next for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited because um I am launching these ads for my business and it's gonna make me a lot of. I mean, I already make good money. I already make a lot of money, but it's going to make me a lot more money. And I'm going to bring on um, an intern mm-hmm. in either January or February. And I'll just teach them the game. 
as long as they're willing to like take on like learning and become an expert, I'm gonna teach them everything that I know, put it into my business and just move it out, try and expand and take my business to the next level while I'm still working. And obviously the goal is to work until your business becomes like your, your main. Yeah. I mean, and like I was saying earlier, multiple streams of income, baby, get that next business started. That's what I'm working on too. 2023, the year of the green, that money. Exactly. <laughs> More green, please. 2023. <laughs> well, I'm so happy you took time out. I know you're busy. Um, and I, I know our schedules are always so crazy, but I'm so happy to take time out. And like, I'm going to come hang out Fort Lauderdale soon. I'm sad I couldn't come this weekend on the, the hot tub boat, but <laughs> I hope you Yo, had that was fun. Lit. Hope you had a happy birthday okay. too. Thank you so much. It was, well, uh, I appreciate it. A- I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, always a pleasure to talk to you. No, I appreciate y'all. We'll hang out soon. I got to get you a birthday drink. Sounds good. I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> All right, you have a good one and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. You too. Bye. All right, guys, I hope you love that interview. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, share the podcast. Stay tuned for next Friday's pod. Can't wait for you to listen. And I'm so excited. It's back, baby, season two. Love you guys.